Will a billionaire's risky bet pay off? America's right-wing billionaires are laying down, making a very risky bet. It's a risky bet that has been made by other billionaires or wealthy people in other countries in the past. I don't, I don't know of any examples where it actually has paid off in a way that benefited society and benefited the billionaires. But they're betting that supporting openly fascist policies and politicians will increase their wealth, will lower their taxes, and will let them get away with more and more questionable business practices without government oversight, all without blowing back on them. And they're betting that with the blessing of five Republicans on the Supreme Court, that would be the Citizens United decision, that they can pour just enough money into election campaigns to swing them by slim margins to friendly politicians, but hold back enough on their funding and those electoral margins so that it won't be obvious to everybody that they're simply buying elections all across the nation. I mean, the Supreme Court has literally said these billionaires could go in and spend, you know, a, a billion dollars on, you know, just, you know, pick a dozen candidates and just make them, make that, you know, bring them to Congress. But they always try to get it, you know, they, they're, they're not looking for 60% margins or 70% margin or 80% margins that would make it obvious that they were just buying elections. They're, they're looking for that 51, 52, 53% margin where it looks like, you know, there's an honest debate going on in America about whether these Republicans are as good as the Democrats. When in fact, they're just basically, you know, carpet bombing America with advertising. And as I pointed out last week in my op-ed about advertising, advertising works. There's a reason why, you know, Facebook is, is paid for with advertising. There's a reason why Twitter is paid for with advertising. There's a reason why CBS, NBC, ABC, Fox News, CNN, MSNBC, why they're all paid for with advertising. There's a reason why this program is paid for with advertising, or at least, you know, about half of it. And that is that advertising works. Particularly good advertising. You know, you tell people about a great new product and they go, wow, I need to have that. But lying advertising works too. All it takes is lots and lots of money. And we're looking at a $9 billion election this year. $9.4 billion has been spent so far. And, you know, these, these billionaires, they're betting that there's still plenty of juice left in their trickle-down sales pitch that will still support more tax cuts. Republicans were big supporters of Trump's tax cuts for billionaires and big corporations. They're still betting that as white Americans find themselves deeper and deeper in debt as a result of, you know, 42 years of Reaganomics, that they can, they can successfully turn that anger against women, against immigrants, against black people, quote, stealing their jobs and affirmative, uh, affirmative action, quote, taking away their kids' chances to go to college. This is before the Supreme Court this week, by the way. They're betting that gullible white people will put their fear of climate disasters way below their fear of drag queens and critical race theory. <laughs> They're betting that employees will forget that Republicans and rich people have fought unions for over 100 years and will never, ever give up. They're betting that we'll continue to tolerate utilities that rip us off, laws that make it expensive to solarize your home, and a food supply filled with cancer-causing, gender-bending, forever chemicals, pesticides, and herbicides. They're betting they can get us more angry about impoverished homeless people than about the $50 trillion they've stolen from the middle class over the past 42 years that has, in large part, caused our homeless crisis. They're betting they can create so much hysteria around crime and race with the money they've poured into advertising that Americans will forget that Republicans have fought against everything from, rate, from the minimum wage to unemployment insurance and Social Security for almost 100 years. You know, the world's wealthiest countries have only been democracies for about a century. There were, you know, at the, at the time of the founding of America, we were the first. Uh, France had their revolution in 18, what was it, 18, or 1797, I think, or 1998. By, by the time of the Civil War, there was a handful. There were three or four democratic nations in the world. And then we had the Civil War, and the whole world kind of held its breath and thought, oh, my God, is this the end of democracy? What a great experiment, but it looks like it's going to go down to, you know, at the hands of the, uh, the southern traitors, the oligarchs. But we, we made it through. And John Stuart Mill had come out with his idea of proportional representation. He published that in the 80s. And so in the 
1860s, 70s, and 80s, and 90s, the, you know, the last half of the 19th century, we saw this huge uh, eruption of actual democracies all across the world. I mean, it was just a really good and healthy thing. And now we're seeing in every one of the nation after nation, we're seeing rich people rise up and try to take these countries over. The oligarchs have taken over Russia. The oligarchs have taken over Hungary. The oligarchs are on the verge of taking over Poland. The oligarchs have taken over Turkey. They've taken over Egypt. They've taken over the Philippines. Oligarchs own Malaysia and, and, uh, and Singapore and uh, uh, Indonesia. Oligarchs control most of the countries of Central and South America. And, you know, they want to control America. And to a large extent, they do, frankly. So the question is, you know, can we survive this? Can a democracy survive this assault by the morbidly rich? Particularly when those morbidly rich start po supporting politicians who seize and hold political power by demonizing Jews, gays, and racial minorities, which we're literally seeing right in front of us right now. They promote claims the policies helping average working people and the poor are socialism and communism. And they run in this dark money underground, the, this background to turn Americans against each other using lies and half-truths in nearly anonymous advertisements and social media to destroy the reputations of public servants who just want to make, uh, help democracy succeed by either elective office or even volunteering to help, poll, you know, as poll workers. And these corrupt politicians that they fund tear apart regulatory agencies, cut taxes, and give billionaires massive government contracts and subsidies. They've already gutted the EPA. They paralyzed the Federal Elections Commission. They began the privatization of both Medicare and the post office. They've eliminated thousands, ten, over 10,000 IRS staffers so that, you know, the very rich never get audited. But the most powerful tool that these right-wing billionaires are using is the most fundamental human need, family, community, and tribe. And, and this is a fundamental human need because throughout the 400,000-year history of, of humanity, of, our, of this, our species, of the human race, those who could not create and sustain tribe or community perished. They were, they were taken out by the, by the human predators or by, the, by nature's predators. We're very fragile, weak animals, really. But we have this ability to create community, and community has always protected us. And deep down inside, we know this. So we form community whenever possible. We do it at work, at work, we do it at schoolhood, we do it around issues, we do it around politics, we do it around hobbies, from model train clubs to ham radio societies, from gamers and neighborhood poker nights to gangs and military units. We are wired to form community. And the right-wing billionaires and the social media moguls who have weaponized this foundational human instinct, this ancient behavior, this deepest of all instincts, against us know it and they're doing it instead of a healthy nurturing community and tribe they instead use algorithms sensationalized media and demagogues to push us toward dysfunctional and often violent tribe uh, tribe militias racism nazism anti-semitism QAnon, misogyny science denial suspicion of democracy itself and its essential fulcrum elections and as a result, we now live in a society where tribe and community are fractured. And two years of COVID keeping us apart from each other made the situation worse. So out of this vacuum emerged a new electronic tribe, new electronic communities based on communities of paranoia. The world has seen this before. After World War I and the flu pandemic. Germany was fractured like this. There was, it was shattered. And Fritz Tyson, the steel baron, nation's richest industrialists, he wrote a book that my father gave, gave me a copy of 50 years ago. I, I looked it up on, on Amazon the other day. It's, it's worth like hundreds of dollars now. It's titled, I Paid Hitler. And I, you know, I read this book a couple of years ago. I write about it from time to time. 
And Fritz Tyson was the guy who personally convinced Hindenburg to make Hitler the chancellor and raise the first three million Reichsmarks for the, for the Nazi party. And he thought he could ride the tiger. And eventually he had to flee Germany because Hitler turned on him. Now we've got um, billionaires funding politicians in America who are saying that widespread voter fraud is a terrible problem and therefore we have to make it harder to vote. Climate change is just a hoax run by academics who want grants with your tax dollars. Queer people are trying to recruit our kids into their so-called lifestyle choice. Black activists want white children to feel so miserable about America's history that they'll grow up to give, to want to give African Americans piles of free money reparations. Teachers are parasites whose unions keep them unaccountable while they gleefully ruin our kids and Democrats at the highest levels party together by drinking the blood of tortured children. These are the beliefs of many of these politicians that are being supported by these right-wing billionaires. There's an actual tribe in America that believes all those things. One of the members of that tribe tried to assassinate Nancy Pelosi in her home. He, he got her husband instead just two days ago, or just about three days ago, I guess now. That tribe sent a thousand, thousands of its members to assassinate Nancy Pelosi and Mike Pence on January 6th. And America's billionaires are still funding that tribe. So can they pull it off? Can they ride the tiger? At the moment, you know, they're fighting our efforts to heal democracy. You know, there's a proposition on the Arizona ballot to, to force transparency in, in dark money. And the Wall Street Journal just ran an editorial against it. You know, outlawing actual opposition took only a few months when, when Pinochet took over Chile. It took a couple, it took about two years for Hitler to do it. It took about five years for Putin to do it. I think if, uh, if Trump or DeSantis become our president, it'll happen in a matter of months. This is the Tom Hartman program. And that's why overwhelming numbers of us must show up to vote now.